good blessed uh, afternoon to all the people all around the world. Uh, no matter what your nationality is, no matter what your political, philosophical, personal, or religious beliefs may be. No matter if you rich or poor, no matter if you old or young, no matter what the color of your skin is, whether it's light or dark, no matter if they classify you as black, white, Asian, Puerto Rican, Mexican, uh, no matter if you are fortunate or unfortunate, I greet all of you all with the same universal greetings. No matter what your occupation is, I greet you with the peace and blessings of God. Now, today is Friday, uh, January the 18th, 2019. The time being about 12.05 a p.m. or in the afternoon. Today I'm, I'm coming to you again, really to everybody, but I want to address especially those in the Mississippi County area and in, in uh, Mississippi County, Missouri area. Charleston, Missouri, Sykes and all the local uh, little cities. They had here two meetings of the candidates for the Mississippi County Sheriff here in, in, in uh, Missouri, in the Charleston, Missouri, or Southeast Missouri, the Boot Hill area. And both of them was interesting. Like I said, one of them was held on January the 15th, uh, this past week, January the 15th, to, uh, 2019 here in Charleston, Missouri at the library which that was my birthday, my 61st birthday. Thank God for allowing me to see 61. Thank him for allowing me to have a normal state of mind and a non-biased mind. But that, that, that debate well, the meeting of the candidates, it was three of them running. And although I'm voting for one, the one that's working in the sheriff's department now that's been there about the last past 10 years up under three different sheriffs, one was arrested and taken out. The other one was voted out. And then is one that stepped in until they have this special election. And Brent Farrell has been up under all of them. He's the man that, that I support. I sat down with my two intelligent, uh, non-biased, uh, non-partial two young daughters, and they agreed the same thing. Now, it's important to not look at a person's race. It's important not to look at a person, a political party, Republican, independent, uh, Democrat. It's, it's important not to look at that. It's important not to look at their religious beliefs. The main thing is important to see what their track record look like and what they are going to do, what they've been doing and what they're going to do now. Another thing is important, when they get in, are they going to protect the inmates that's in the, the detention center or the jail? Are they going to treat all of them the same? Are they going to be able to identify when those that have the mental crisis? And if you looked at the two debates, you will see it was addressed. And if you look up, Charleston Chambers Facebook page, you'll be able to see both of the debates. The other one was uh, yesterday, uh, January the 17th, 2019, in East Prairie, Missouri, uh, at the Nutritious Center. But what I want to tell y'all is, whoever get in, 
and we praying that it's Brent Farrell. Uh, when you get in, make sure that when you combine yourselves or work hand in hand with other law enforcement agencies, make sure they're not partial or biased. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, because I have documentation where with the Charleston, Missouri Police Department, I was arrested twice, convicted twice on two misdemeanors, which if the judge would have went, the, the two judges would have went by the law, I would never been, uh, I would never been convicted. You see, on one of them, the last conviction, a misdemeanor, me exercising my constitutional rights, the First and the Fourteenth Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom to assembly, assembly and protest peacefully. I was doing all that. You see, anytime you have a chief of police, and I got to keep it real, uh, here in Charleston, Missouri, if a police officer put a report on me, on anybody, but when they put it on me, knowing I'm an activist, knowing I speak up against the Charleston Police Department, and he go past you, he don't even get your approval and go straight to the prosecuting attorney's office and get an outstanding warrant for me for harassment and intimidation when I'm merely videoing a person who was giving false information to children in my community on my block a few feet away from my house and the person that I was videoing never called the police department and I have the police report, I have the affidavit that went to the state's attorney and for then to the judge that now time that this officer who's not on the force anymore, Officer Zach Albright, who was fired from Sykeston Police Department in Sykeston, Missouri, and I believe he either was fired or he left the Charleston, Missouri Police Department how was he allowed to go and get an outstanding warrant on me to say as if I'm a threat to the community? And then how was he able to put one thing in the affidavit to get a warrant and a probable cause affidavit to have me arrested, have my two children and my daddy frightened? And then he say one thing in the police report in the affidavit, which he said, the individual that I was videoing called him. But then, no, he said he called the individual. The individual didn't call him. He called the individual and had the individual come down. The individual hadn't even called him. So if the individual didn't call him, that means the individual didn't feel threat by me videoing him. He didn't feel intimidated. But the officer, Zach Albright, if you look at some of my YouTube videos, I videoed him showing how incompetent he was before he did that and what it was, retaliation and re revenge. Because when he got on the stand in the courtroom, they, the lawyer asked him, did Mr. Such and Such call you or did you call him? He said, no, such and such wife called. So that's showing that he lying. He had one thing on this and one thing on the other. But yet, there's no law enforcement officials in, in the boot hill would investigate this. But yet, I had to do two years probation. Now, if a criminal wished to do what he did, lied, they would call it perjury. And with him, it was, it was public or law enforcement misconduct. The same with the chief of police over almost 20 years ago. And I got the documents. Robert Hearns, Bobby Hearns. Because of his family, 
And it's no disrespect to none of his family because I haven't had any run-ins with his family. But I hadn't had it in with him. And the run-ins was when he falsified a report. He told my car, when you tow a person's car, you towing it for a reason to get evidence. He told my car and I got documents to show they didn't even search my car. He claimed something was in my house that I know wasn't in my house. But I trusted the system and had a public defender who sold me out, later became a state's attorney after that. But I have document proof. Here it is, I called the Charleston Police Department and I'm telling you this here because whoever coming to that sheriff, you're gonna have to investigate these people too. This is the only legal agency that the people haven't been investigating. They study on the Sheriff's Department, but the Charleston Missouri Public, uh, uh, public Safety, with the exception of a few police officers, is one of the most corrupted. Falsifying documents, responding to certain people. When I call a dog, being a, I'm being attacked by a dog, and then they said they sent, they did the, 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 I got the paperwork where they said a dispatcher, dispatch a particular officer to my house. And I got cameras this time. The officer said they responded, but they never came. And I got document proof. And I went down and told the chief about it. Then he tried to make an excuse. He said, no, we didn't send that officer. The dispatcher made a mistake. How is the dispatcher gonna make a mistake? And it's typed in and it's recorded. She sent Keith Bradford there that don't like me because of what his mother did, tried to force my D and five year old daughter to say that a Charleston R1 school district bus driver didn't frighten her. And she talked to my daughter without my permission, without my presence and without my knowledge. And she said it was all right. But she talked to her five days after what the bus driver did and I complained within minutes after that. See, that's corruption. But you know, because Brenda Batford, Keith Batford, family is a part of the city, they don't care. Bobby Hearns, because Warren Hearns was the governor, Betty Hearns was a, a, a Missouri state representative, they don't care, but I do. I'm not afraid of the Hearns, I'm not afraid of the Bentfords, I'm not afraid of no family in this town black or white. When you do wrong to my children, I'm gonna keep on putting you on social media. You done locked me up twice. You done sent DCF to my house, claiming I wasn't taking care of my daddy right. And good thing you brought a good Charleston, Missouri police officer, James Williams, a veteran like my daddy is. My daddy a World War II veteran, fighting against Adolf Hitler, one of the most prejudiced human beings that ever faced, stayed on the face of this earth. But yet, me and my children and my daddy, we fight it again. James Williams understand he was in the military. But when he came, God sent him for a reason. And they sent a lady from the top department of Asian. At first I wasn't gonna let in my house, but I let her in and they seen whoever called a nominee saying that I wasn't taking care of my daddy right. My daddy hadn't been here for six days. It was a retaliation because of the fact that I was going up against the Charleston R1 School District and the Charleston, Missouri Police Department. But I'm gonna tell you this here, vote for Brent Farrell on the, on the special election on January the 29th, 2019. Brent Farrell, if you get in there, don't let these Charleston, Missouri Police Department corrupt y'all. Peace be still.